Hello everyone, this is part 16 of Soul of Negari. Leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Chapter 151, Volume 2, Chapter 49, The Great Cataclysm. Translator, La 09. Several years ago, Lucia who was still in her teens was undergoing training within the D.E.E. .E. division due to her age, while Liu Bien had already begun to take on assignments due to being a few years older than she was. Due to both of them being UBU orphans, their relationship was quite amiable, and Lucia held a faint sense of affection towards Liu Bien who acted like a brother to her. However, during a competitive mission, in order to obtain his position as a government special agent, Liu Bien purposely sabotaged and caused the mission of a friend of theirs to fail, at the same time causing the friend to lose their life. From that point on, her impression of him as the perfect older brother collapsed and shattered, the only thing left Liu Xia held towards Liu Bien was hatred, and a deep impression of him in her heart. This time around, Liu Bien sent her a message on his own accord, explaining what happened at that time while telling her that there was a different truth to what she knew. Ever since that time, Lucia had always suppressed her emotions. Even when she accepted the order to become the subordinate of the new disaster king, Fang Zi. Despite how close they seemed, she had not truly become a part of the disaster king's team. For Lucia who loved Liu Bien as much as she hated him, she wasn't able to discard her past, that's why she now chose to follow her past and discard her present. However, as Fang Zi appeared in front of her at this moment, Lucia's internal guards all came crashing down. She had fully given up on her past to truly become part of the Disaster King's team. Liu Bien who was still holding a sword against Lucia's neck displayed a smirk, then became silent. Can this script get any more cliché? Killer J was munching on an apple as he retorted. At the same time, Negari also saw this thanks to borrowing Killer J's perspective, even without thinking, the following course of events was quite predictable. In the beginning, Liu Bien was completely brainwashed by the leather jacket man, so when the chance to become a special agent for the government came up, he followed the orders of the leather jacket man to do anything he could to obtain it. As he resorted to unsavory means to sabotage his comrade, something unexpected happened and caused the other party to die. It was at this time that a thought of rejection appeared in his mind, causing the brainwashing to fade. All in all, he was most likely a villain that could be whitewashed. After this, the most likely course of events would be that Fang Zi winning against the leather jacket man through Liu Bien foil his plan and once again emerge as the savior of the world. Negari shook his head without a care. The man who had surgery to look like Yu Guangming had actually achieved the first stage of release, combined with the unique properties of Dissas Force, his strength wouldn't actually be lacking compared to Negari. But comparatively, Negari was a visitor from another world, and he had the erroneous property of the Dragon of Evil Sin form so even when he was being led to follow the destiny of this world, he still managed to discover and alter his course of action in time. On the other hand, this villain was a native of this world that had already been restrained completely by destiny, he might believe that he was fighting against it, but all he did was push himself closer to the verge with every move he made. If I'm not careful enough, I would also end up like him. Despite this thought, what Negari was about to do right now had nothing to do with the word, careful. He took to the air as his body quickly morphed and changed, turning into a body full of germs. Under Negari's will, the germs in his body quickly started to change as well, transforming from the, diffuse, germs into the, spiritual inception, germs. The body made entirely out of, spiritual inception, germs first began as the body of a giant, then it started morphing again as the spiritual inception, germs twisted against one another and manifested as a strange-looking organ. Indeed, this incomplete, premature-looking object was actually an organ, not a monster or monster body part. On the whole, the organ looked similar to a heart with a few arteries attached to it. 
if someone was able to observe He Chiao's respiratory tract, they would find that it was full of miniature versions of this organ. The organ then started to shrink more and more until it exploded, turning into tiny particles that were spreading everywhere by the wind in the air. Huge amounts of germs were spreading to every area of this domain. Once a person was infected, they would feel their throats becoming itchy, followed by them having trouble breathing. They would then collapse, trying to press against their own chests and gasping for air. Only by pure chance would they breathe the correct way and take in some air to sustain themselves. Some particularly sharp people would soon notice the rhythm required to breathe, then change their breathing accordingly. This would be the first challenge, one that only those with the greatest adaptability would be able to pass. Once their breathing followed the correct rhythm, they would cause the germs attached to their respiratory tracts to activate and send the packaged information inside as electrical signals directly into the host's brains, providing them with the information related to the spiritual inception cultivation method. As for those who couldn't pass the challenge or were not lucky enough to do so, their faces would become flushed from being unable to inhale or exhale any air, suffocate, and die. Once the germs recognized their host to be dead, they would begin to mutate in a theoretically positive way. Negari had put all of himself into soul's blood, which was in essence a type of virus, this included the information of every other kind of germ and virus in his possession. In other words, soul's blood had become the core of his being, as long as the conditions were fulfilled, the soul's blood would be able to evolve into any germs he had recorded. During such evolution, soul's blood would also remove the information concerning other germs in order to prevent leaking too much information. After all, since Negari had decided to package his germs as products to be sold, there was no telling if anyone would try to read the hidden information contained within them. This acted as a protective measure of his business, and more importantly, of Negari's secrets. To create these, spiritual inception, germs, Negari had chosen to mutate his, diffuse, germs ever so slightly. For the sake of his plan, he had actually hidden a recessive strain of germs within these, diffuse, germs that, when certain conditions were met, would transform into the dominant strain. And the condition that Negari set was the death of the germs host. As they were triggered, the recessive strain of germs became dominant, then started to quickly multiply within the newly deceased bodies, stimulating their brains with weak electrical pulses that reanimated the dead bodies. Because of this, those who managed to pass the first challenge soon noticed that the other people around them who turned red and collapsed earlier slowly started to get back up with black lines writhing under their skins. These people then swiftly howled and screeched towards the survivors. The sole instinct of these germs was to multiply and grow, but the biomass of a single body was nowhere near enough to satisfy that desire. Thus, the people whose bodies were filled with, spiritual inception, germs became the best source of food for them. Furthermore, due to these germs being mutated from, spiritual inception, germs, they had a strange sixth sense capable of recognizing, spiritual inception, germs. This was the second challenge that Negari prepared for these people. Dissas force material was limited, even if Negari had been constantly stocking them more and more during this period, he still didn't have enough. Through the use of, spiritual inception, germs and dissas force material, as long as the individual wasn't too unlucky, they would definitely be able to achieve the first stage of release within a certain period of time. And this was nowhere near enough for Negari's needs. Things were too peaceful and too calm, without motivation, how would these people strive their best to improve themselves and achieve the second stage of release as fast as possible? Chapter 152, Volume 2 Chapter 50, Disaster King Translator, La 009 These mutated germs were the most excellent hunters. They climbed to the roof of buildings or a hidden corner of the street and assimilated themselves just enough into their environments. 
In fact, some of them could even change their colors to disguise themselves as stairs, carpets, or any other mundane things. Being suddenly ambushed by these monsters was impossible for anyone to defend against, their only possible outcome would be to helplessly become food. Because of this, the only countermeasure against these monsters was to discover them ahead of time. That would not be very hard in the beginning, as the monsters weren't used to their environments, but the longer they lived, the better they would become at hunting until they could perfectly blend into their surroundings. The ground could be a monster, a door could be a monster, a car could be a monster, even the streetlights could be monsters. Similar to how the monsters were able to sense, spiritual inception, germs due to mutating from the same source, practitioners of spiritual inception who were infected by the spiritual inception, germs should theoretically also be able to sense these monsters. However, in order to achieve this, they had to constantly improve their mastery of spiritual inception. Only by pushing their perception to its limit and even beyond would they be able to detect the existence of these monsters before they are attacked. Following that, Negari scattered the standard Dissas Force material weapons in his possession to various corners of the area. The information contained within, spiritual inception, germs told their hosts very clearly that if they practiced spiritual inception to a certain limit and they still couldn't obtain any Dissas Force material weapons, their souls would be destroyed by the Dissas Force contained within the, spiritual inception, germs. If they didn't practice spiritual inception enough, they would easily be killed by a hidden monster, but if they strived to improve and couldn't obtain one of very few Dissas Force material weapons, they would also die from spiritual inception. Faced with this dilemma, only those with true abilities would be able to exert their potential and survive. Only such people would be able to go beyond their limits and achieve the second stage of release of their origin. It was fortunate that Dissas Force existed in this world, as it was a different manifestation of the interference force that came from the soul, furthermore, the soul that provided this power must have already achieved the third stage of release or perhaps even higher. Since interference force in general and dissess force specifically were powers that were derived from the soul, it was the best possible material to help release one's origin. In a way, this was like having a senior cultivator bestowing his cultivation onto you to make you stronger, although, that analogy wasn't quite accurate either. Within a secret room at the fifth domain, the lid of a coffin was abruptly opened. Negari had taken over this body and awakened from inside. As he left the secret room, Negari saw a huge amount of construction workers and machinery. After Yikong's building collapse disaster, quite a few places in the fifth domain were still under reconstruction. And since the majority of the 5th Domain D.E.R. Division's disaster team was killed by Yi Kong and couldn't be replaced right away, it was the perfect place to play any hidden hands. Negari's body continued to morph and grow, turning into a large dragon with three wings, he swiftly flapped his wings and took flight. If there were too few people at the second stage of release, it would hinder the progress of Negari's total evolution. He needed to continue spreading his, spiritual inception, germs, using a large enough sample size to ensure that there were enough people who achieved the second stage of release. Several fighter jets flew in from afar. Quite obviously, the government had understood what happened at the seventh domain and swiftly sent out fighter jets as soon as they discovered unusual movements within the fifth domain. Authority holder, Please cease all of your movements, someone was declaring to Negari using a megaphone on the ground, if you do not cease, we will be forced to open fire. His three wings continued to flap, the dragon of eternal sin's tail swung from side to side as the giant mouth in front of his chest opened wide. An overwhelming amount of dissess force gathered as a sound that could not be uttered by human vocal cords resounded within the fifth domain. Gliast. The power of, Dracotung, just like, respiratory art, had gotten a lot weaker as he arrived in this world. Although it was still usable, 
Its power had to be supported by himself instead of the entire world like in the flame world. As Negari continued his research, he managed to combine, Dracotung, with Dissas Force, especially the syllable, Jliast, that originally represented unstoppable power. This syllable had an amazing level of compatibility with Dissas Force's destructive nature. The very concept of unstoppable power manifested as shockwaves with the three-winged dragon as its center. As the shockwaves swept through the fighter jets in the air, both them and the pilots inside shattered into pieces before being thoroughly decimated. The city below experienced a much weaker shockwave, but the hysteria could no longer be prevented. The citywide alarms had already been ringing since a while ago causing everyone to rush towards the established emergency bunkers in panic. With another explosion in the air, the three-winged dragon vanished without a trace, the howling wind carried tiny particles into the bodies of every human in its range. A middle-aged man was breathing heavily as he managed to make it into the emergency shelter before it closed. After entering, he simply followed the safety protocols and disinfected himself with the provided equipment. Although he felt a small itch at his throat, he assumed it was because of the disinfectant spray. After making it into the shelter, he cleared its throat and spat some mucus into a garbage bin before rubbing his throat. However, he only felt worse and worse as his breathing gradually became much harder, feeling a brief moment of lapsed consciousness, he dropped down to his knees. The government employees at the shelter who had already been notified ahead of time hurriedly came forward, while wearing thick hazmat suits, they marked out a yellow line to prevent bystanders from approaching and started spraying the man with disinfectant powder. Before he managed to say a single word, the man was already knocked unconscious. Everything he came into contact with before he arrived was directly burned, the entire shelter was disinfected once again including everyone inside after they underwent another health check. However, no one noticed that a small fleshy bud that was writhing in a small gap between the walls of the building had stuck itself onto a person's shoe and started to spread. Taking advantage of Negri Incorporated's best-selling products and the many people who craved supernatural power that volunteered to do Negri's dirty work, they attempted to spread the spiritual inception germs in over 20 domains. Some people successfully trigger a mass plague, others were discovered by agents of the government or the D.E.A .E division and disinfected just in time to prevent the mass spread of the spiritual inception germs. Although, it was nothing but temporary prevention. Since the spiritual inception, germs inherited the diffuse germs terrifying adaptability as long as there were enough surviving germs, they could quickly spread once again. Negri only spread the germs in a total of three domains, which were the seventh, the fifth, as well as his headquarters of the sixth domain. After Charmshire led a large amount of the sixth domain's fighting forces to the seventh domain, there weren't many people left in their disaster team. Without Charmshire being in charge and the sudden disappearance of Seven, the 6th Domain D.E.A .E Division was no match for Negri. Soon enough, the 6th Domain was turned into hell on earth as well. Negri's Dissas Force continued to boil and grew without stopping, the mass multiplication of his, spiritual inception, germs allowed his Dissas Force to continue growing without limit. Soon enough, the quantitative change became a qualitative change, his authority fluctuation successfully evolved from grade E to grade F, promoting himself to become a disaster king. However, his authority was still, other world invasion, and not, super plague. Chapter 153, Volume 2 Chapter 51, Sisters, Brothers, Please Subscribe to My Book, Shameless Self-Promotion. Translator, La 9 TN Yes, that is the title that the author gave to this chapter. This means that if the authority, Super Plague, really does exist, the holder would not be me. Negri calmly assessed the situation without any worry. 
After all, I've already caused the greatest possible plague in history. If my actions are still unable to promote my authority into super plague, then it could only mean that authority belongs to somebody else. Negari was constantly monitoring the proliferation of his germs. Or perhaps, the new disaster king might actually be born during this plague I cause. Despite how random the distribution of authorities is, within a world where the concept of destiny exists, all randomness will happen with certainty, and occurrences with the tiniest chance of occurring will surely occur as long as they are necessary. From the looks of it, the authority of Super Plague has already been determined by destiny, which should be this world's countermeasure against me. As Negari walked through the chaotic, messed up streets, desperate cries and screams could occasionally be heard. Die, monster, this shout sounded from afar as a man swung his baseball bat to strike the zombie whose body was covered in black blood vessels. These zombies were the victims of the virus that mutated from his, spiritual inception, germs. Negari didn't specifically name them this way. It was due to the symptoms displayed during the initial stage of infection that made the infected appear like zombies that they were called zombies. These zombies had wax-like skin that dripped as thick liquid to the ground, revealing the black blood vessels all over their bodies while the skin that wasn't dripping appeared completely bruised and black due to asphyxiation. Their teeth and mouths were clapping non-stop like fishes that couldn't wait for flesh to fall into them. They were waving both arms forward aimlessly, trying to grab whatever they could. Despite how silly they appeared, thanks to their bodies being entirely out of germs, the power they could exert was overwhelming. If someone was caught by one of these zombies, it would be impossible for them to escape with their own strength even a healthy young man at his prime wouldn't be able to achieve such a feat. The man with the baseball bat didn't seem very afraid, as he continued to breathe following the spiritual inception method, his senses were being heightened. His mental fortitude was also quite considerable, otherwise he couldn't have found and adapted to the correct breathing method so quickly after being infected. His shout from before was mostly to vent his emotions, after a while of observation, he noticed that these zombies had already lost their sense of hearing and were actually using some sort of other sense in order to recognize the lucky survivors. Being thrusted into a dangerous situation so quickly, if he didn't vent it appropriately, Chen Di-11 felt like he might develop some sort of mental issue very quickly, which was detrimental to his own survival within this hellish doomsday. The baseball bat in Chen Diaishi's hand continued to swing at the zombies. He found that although these creatures were strong, their bodies weren't very solid, in fact, they could be considered fragile instead. With every hit of the baseball bat, the sound of fractures could be heard all over their bodies, sometimes if the zombie exerted too much force, they would even break their own bones. Because of this, after a short while of rampaging, some zombies would become helpless to do anything but slowly creep along the ground. Most survivors didn't want to waste their strength and clean up these creepy crawling things, and thus created the opportunity for the massive number of crawling zombies to transform into what later came to be known as the Groundhuggers. After they finished assimilating these bodies, the germs manifested a layer of slimy liquid that could undergo basic color changing to camouflage themselves. While avoiding the zombies' attacks, Chen Di-11 swung his baseball bat onto the zombie's head, causing it to crack and splatter, defeating it. Cautiously watching the fallen zombie, Chen Di-11 exhaled in relief. While the zombie was ragged and dirty, the brand name on his clothing could still be recognized, not to mention the fancy watch on his wrist that signified his status as a successful person while he was still alive. However, this once successful person had now fallen at his feet, while Chen Di-11 enjoyed his qualifications to survive. After just a short period of time, Chen Di-11 felt like he might enjoy this world. He was just a nameless nobody in society, but as disaster struck, thanks to his adaptability, he was the one who managed to survive. 
The information regarding the spiritual inception method in his mind informed him that as long as he could find a Dissus Force material weapon, he would be able to push forward to the next stage of spiritual inception and awaken his own superpowers. Thanks to this disaster completely messing up societal order, an insignificant nobody like himself might be able to become a VIP in the future. You truly have a lot of potential. This sudden voice startled Chen Di 11 and caused him to almost swing his baseball bat behind his back out of reflex. Within my senses, your progress of cultivating spiritual inception is the fastest Negari slowly stated as his terrifying aura crept up and surrounded Chen Di 11 Suppressed by this aura, Chen Di 11 couldn't turn around, he didn't even have the courage to say a single word only stand there and shiver while frozen by the fear. From the other party's words, they were extremely familiar with the spiritual inception method, in fact, quite possibly, this abrupt incident might have had something to do with him. As the one with the fastest progress, let me grant you a small reward. Unleash your ambition, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how much you would be able to achieve. Negari pierced his index finger directly into the man's heart from his back. His finger then broke off, morphed into a tentacle and fused with the man's body. At the same time, it also transferred a certain piece of information into his mind. As Negari pulled his hand back, his index finger had already regrown. He continued heading towards the next area to confirm the situation of the other specimens. Chen Di 11 stood exactly where he was without moving a single bit, only after Negari had gone completely out of sight did he collapse to the ground, his entire body soaked in cold sweat. For the rest of his life, he would never forget that stifling sense of dread and terror. Chen Di 11 was clutching his head, during that incident just now, a piece of information appeared in his head almost the same way that the spiritual inception method did which convinced him even further that the man behind him earlier was the one who created spiritual inception. The information he received not only told him of where to find one Dissas Force material weapon, but it also recorded the forging method of another type of weapon. Biomass gear, Chen Di 11 turned his gaze towards the constantly writhing zombies on the ground, thinking of the information regarding the virus within these zombies that he just obtained. The parasitic, spiritual inception, germs inside everyone's respiratory tracts and the virus that turned these dead people into zombies were two sides of the same coin. Since the zombies were able to consume, spiritual inception, germs in order to strengthen themselves, as long as one knew the appropriate technique, they would naturally also be able to take control of the zombie virus using their, spiritual inception, germs and the information that appeared in Chen Di Aishi's head was exactly that. By taking portions of a zombie's body that had been completely consumed by the virus, through a branch breathing technique of spiritual inception, he would be able to refine and mold this virus into various shapes and attach them to his body as biomass gear. This way, not only would he obtain the great strength of the germs, but he would also obtain a certain level of protection for his body. The zombie bodies were fragile because most of it had already been consumed by the virus, but by turning the virus themselves into biomass gear, its defenses would be enough to block handgun bullets without any issues. Unleash my ambition and look forward to how far I can go. Chen Di Aishi's gaze gradually became firm as he looked at the zombie at his feet, then let me show you. Chapter 154, Volume 2 Chapter 52 if there are no brothers or sisters, genderless are good as well. Even more shameless self-promotion. Translator, La 09 While Negari was going through how the germs were growing, the situation on Killer J's side reached a conclusion. Sure enough, the leather jacket man achieved his initial plan in the beginning, through the altar he'd prepared, he used the protagonist Fong Zhe as a key to gain access to the so-called source pool. There was a mention of the source pool with the Apocalypse Stone Tablet. God distributed authorities to living beings of the world, 
All of his authority was stored within the source pool, while the god who had distributed his authorities went into slumber. Whenever some unsuitable appeared, the source pool would distribute the authority to them, and the disus force obtained whenever an authority holder exercised his authority also came from the source pool. It was basically another dimension separated from this one, according to the records within the ruin, the stronger an authority holder was, the more control they had over that dimension. The ten authorities of Disaster Kings were just enough to fully connect to the source pool. As an avid fan of Yu Guang Ming, the leather jacket man had realized the scheme those people planned against Yu Guang Ming, so he hid within the ruins trying to find the necessary documents to save Yu Guang Ming, but that was also when the Yubu earthquake occurred, and it occurred right above the ruins. As Yu Guang Ming exercised his authority to his limit, the leather jacket man borrowed Yu Guang Ming's power to gain access into the source pool for the first time, thus obtaining this ability of grand ideals, then luckily managed to escape at the cost of witnessing Yu Guang Ming's death. The next half of the leather jacket man's life would be spent on revenge. He wanted to take revenge against those people, against the D.E.R division. Together with the records he obtained from the ruin, the leather jacket man joined, survivors, which was still pure at the time, used, grand ideal, and began to organize his plan. An authority of the ten disaster kings would only be just enough to gain access to the source pool and derive a bit of power from it, which wouldn't be that much of a loss to those people. Knowing this, he targeted Fang Zhe, who was both a disaster king and the one who held the title of king of people. Using his gigantic altar, he would be able to draw a large number of authorities from within the source pool. Everything went exactly as he planned at the start, Fang Zhe walked straight into his trap, he came into the university that was actually the center of the altar in order to face him. At this time, Fang Zhe's authority went out of control and acted by itself, drawing a crimson asteroid from outer space towards the earth. This was the same situation that Yu Guangming ran into before, he started exercising his authority without meaning to and his disus force automatically released its essence, or as we know it, he achieved the first stage of release of his, origin. Once the ritual was over, the most crucial piece to fight against the apocalypse, the king of people, would lose his life, the majority of authorities within the source pool, which was also the source of this world's power would leak, and another great disaster would occur. This would be the thorough defeat of the people in power, and the leather jacket man's vengeance. The majority of Fonze's disus force was swiftly absorbed by the altar to access the source pool. If Fang Zhe's authority didn't require time to come into effect, with the size of the asteroid that he summoned, this would have been a disaster on the same scale as the Yubu earthquake, if not even greater. It was during this period of time when the majority of his disus force was taken away and he was spending a lot of effort to make sure that the asteroid would fall as slowly as possible that he became completely drained, falling from a mighty disaster king to an ordinary person that could be hurt by anyone and everyone. If not to ensure that the ritual persisted, he might have already been killed by the survivors, mob. At the crucial moment, Chang Xia arrived and drew the leather jacket man's attention. The leather jacket man held a deep grudge against this traitor who killed Yu Guang Ming, so he immediately ordered Wang Zhao and a portion of survivors, members here to attack Chang Xia. At this point, the heavily wounded Fang Zhe suddenly used what seemed to be a mini galaxy to break through the crowd restraining him and rushed towards the leather jacket man. Just as all things seemed lost, Lu Bian betrayed them and destroyed a portion of the altar, suffering the recoil from breaking the ritual, he displayed a brilliant smile and whitewashed himself. Having regained a portion of his power, Fang Zhe engaged in one final combat against the leather jacket man, used his newly awakened power called Star Force to defeat the Leather Jacket Man, thus spoiling the scheme. In Killer Jay's own words, a crazed fan wanted to take revenge for his idol and incited a world-class threat, the Chinibu brain-dead teenager relied on nothing but his protagonist aura while charging to his death to foil the plan. After the Leather Jacket Man was defeated, his Grand Ideal lost its effects, but after being brainwashed by Grand Ideal for so many years, whether they were affected by such an ability was no longer important, a portion of them ran away while most were arrested. While the members of survivors who weren't too deeply involved were systematically incorporated into the D.E.R division and government as supplementary personnel against the threat of the living dead, also known as the zombie plague that Negri caused. 
Among these people was a certain fatty who noticed that the maniac he introduced into survivors had vanished with no one recognizing where he went. At the same time, the research records and documents of the leather jacket man were all stolen without fail. The only thing that the D.E.R. division people managed to find was a strange smiley face with a letter J incorporated into it. Fang Zhe successfully stopped the summoning of the asteroid in time. His Disus Force had also grown considerably while also awakening his soul ability, Star Force. While it was called that, it had nothing to do with the stars in the sky. Its power wasn't too different from the spirit bomb where people raised their hands into the air, and very similar to the ability of the last god in the flame world. The more people that trusted in Fang Zhe, the more people Fang Zhe would be able to borrow power from. If he was a bit more Chinibu, Fang Zhe could even declare some shameless line like you are all stars in my mind and heart to the people in his team. In fact, it was when Fang Zhe borrowed Lu Xiu's power, or rather her authority, that he finally managed to defeat the leather jacket man. In a way, this was Fang Zhe's power as a king. Although they foiled the leather jacket man's plan, the entire country was now caught in a calamity of the living dead, and it was continuing to spread to the entire world. In order to stop this calamity, the most urgent order of business was to locate the next disaster king to be born, Super Plague. Only by borrowing the new disaster king's power would they be able to defeat Negari as the Lord of Aberration. In other words, I became the next boss for Fang Zhe and company to defeat? Negari was walking through a relief shelter while the shelter's security force rained bullets down on him. However, Due to the terrifying layer of Dis's force protecting his body, all their bullets and attacks were rendered useless as a large amount of spiritual inception, germs continued to spread into his surroundings. After confirming that most people here had been infected, Negri ignored the people who insisted on continuing to attack him. As he had claimed before, if it wasn't necessary, he didn't like to massacre the innocent. Read latest chapters at Wuxia World Sight only. In the past, Negari might have vented his anger on unrelated people, but the current Negari no longer cared for such useless actions. After all, each infected person represented a step on the stairs for Negari to continue his advance. Negari ended up not killing a single person in the shelter, furthermore, even when the symptoms of the plague broke out later on, due to having been prepared, not a lot of people died from being unable to breathe. After all, a few practitioners of spiritual inception had already come into contact with the government and handed the method over to them. After news of the spiritual inception got out, knowing that anyone could obtain superpowers through it, some people even snuck out of the quarantine zone into the infected zone, becoming infected on their own accords. All in all, the number of infected people only increased day by day. On the third day, the first person to achieve the first stage of release had appeared. Chapter 155, Volume 2, Chapter 53, Biomass Gear Translator, La 9 The first stage of, origin, release, achieved in three days. If Granny Seely knew about this, she would have been so angry that she puked blood. Supernatural powers within the flame world had been weakened so much that every person who obtained it must have superior bravery, or a tough will, or happened upon a great opportunity, or had a unique constitution compared to others, in short, they had to be a cut above the rest in one way or another. As the only remaining witch in the flame world, Granny Seely began her supernatural journey at the age of 16, when she was still a beautiful aristocratic young lady. From the moment she discovered the notebook of witchcraft left by her ancestors in their closest, it took her a total of ten years to achieve the first stage of release and become a qualified witch. For the next several dozen years, she continued to be stuck on that first stage. In order to obtain the resources necessary to reach the second stage of release, she basically spent every bit of effort, both physically and mentally, as well as countless years of planning and counter-planning, only to fail at the very end. Meanwhile, people in the disaster world only needed to be stimulated by Dissus Force for a little bit to achieve the first stage of release within three days. Furthermore, if Negari's calculations were correct, 
it would only take a month at most for the first person to achieve the second stage of release to appear. Since the spiritual inception, germ was one of the foundations for their cultivation, as they continued to practice spiritual inception, the soul virus hidden within the germs would unknowingly infect their souls, turning them into a part of negary. In this way, after the number of people who achieved the second stage of release reached a certain amount, Negari would be able to use them as the foundation to completely renew the quality of his soul, breaking through that seemingly impossible limit. The first person to achieve the first stage of release wasn't Chen Di-11 who drew Negari's attention, but rather someone else. It wasn't because he was slow or anything, Chen Di-11 was actually trying to suppress his progress of spiritual inception right now, otherwise he might not be able to obtain a Dissas Force weapon in time. In order to create biomass gear, he had to hunt a certain number of zombies, endure the disgust of having to cut up zombie organs to extract the mutated virus inside, then pour that black virus all over himself. As he used the derivative breathing method of spiritual inception that Negari bestowed him, the layer of liquid slime-like virus started to envelop Chen Di-11 like a living creature, penetrated his body, ate away his flesh, and swiftly assimilated his body. Followed by an intense devouring consciousness that attacked Chen Di-Shi's mind. Damn it, that person didn't mention anything about this being so uncomfortable. Clutching his head, Chen Di-11 collapsed, writhing in pain while enduring the attack of the collective viral consciousness on his mind. In reality, creating biomass gear wasn't quite as simple as described. If all you needed to do was gather enough mutated germs and use the derivative breathing to mold it into equipment, biomass gear would be too inexpensive. The hardest part about creating biomass gear was fighting against the collective consciousness of the viruses, the main function of the derivative breathing method was actually to bridge the consciousness of both parties. In this situation, there could only be one of three outcomes. First case, the collective viral consciousness would devour the mind of the person, thoroughly consuming them. The mutated zombie virus would mutate once again to manifest stronger monsters. Second case, the person's willpower was strong enough to completely overpower and defeat the collective viral consciousness, thus dominating the mass of viruses with their minds. By flexibly gaining control of the mass of the virus, the perfect biomass gear would be created. Third case, the consciousness of both parties would fuse halfway to form a symbiotic relationship where both sides would influence the other. How great this influence was would depend on the individual willpower. In the end, Chen Di-11 was too impatient, his willpower couldn't completely destroy the consciousness of the viruses, but as a person judged by Negari to have potential, he wasn't weak enough to be fully consumed by the viruses either. Because of this, during their struggle for supremacy, their consciousness began to fuse halfway and formed a symbiotic relationship. When Chen Di-11 stood back up, he was now wearing a black skin-tight bodysuit. In order to facilitate the use of the spiritual inception breathing method, the suit formed a mask on his face that made him look like a demon from afar. After the symbiotic relationship was established, Chen Di-11 had officially obtained a biomass gear. His biomass gear had a strong devouring characteristic that could consume other creatures to replenish the host's vitality. At the same time, it could consume the genes of those creatures in order to evolve and strengthen itself, however in exchange, using this ability would affect the host's sense of self. Furthermore, if he was able to thoroughly destroy the viral consciousness in the future, in exchange for losing the devouring ability, his biomass gear would essentially become a part of his body, capable of coordinating with the ability he awakened from releasing his origin. The symbiotic form was, in nature, the evil path of cultivation. While it can rapidly increase one's strength, it also carried the side effect of influencing one's mind. And the complete domination form had greater potential to grow while also being safe. It was hard to say which form was superior. 
And it was because he took on the symbiotic form that Chen Di-11 lost so much time. When he finally made it to where Negari told him there would be a Dissas Force weapon, he found that someone had already taken it. Due to his symbiotic relationship with the viral consciousness, Chen Di Shi's human sympathy became comparatively duller while his aggression got greatly increased. If it was his previous self, he would most likely accept that he was unlucky and try to search for other Dissas Force weapons. After all, even if he knew beforehand that there was a Dissas Force weapon here, that didn't mean that it automatically belonged to him. However, his current first thought after discovering that someone had arrived before him was to find that person and take his Dissas Force weapon back. This was due to the influence of the viral consciousness. Naturally, Chen Di-11 noticed this influence, but he didn't care. In this time of chaos, people with this sort of personality might actually be fitter to survive and achieve greater success. Touching a burnt-out campfire on the ground, he discovered that some warmth could still be felt, which meant that the other party hadn't left this place for long. Most likely, that person immediately tried to achieve the first stage of release right here after he found the Dissas Force weapon, which meant that he could still catch up if he hurried. With his biomass gear, Chen Di-11 obtained a greater sense of cognition through using it in combination with spiritual inception breathing. He could now perceive the, spiritual inception, germs within his respiratory tracts and faintly sense other people who carried the, spiritual inception, germs within their bodies. You want to run away after stealing my things. Chen Di-11 kept up his heightened senses through breathing and chased after his target. Around three areas one away from that location, a middle-aged man was holding a standard longsword forged from unique materials in one hand, while also holding onto the hand of a twelve-year-old girl with his other hand as he cautiously made his way through the city. Sensing the metallic feel of the longsword on his finger, the connection he felt with it through his soul caused him to feel considerably more assured. His progress with spiritual inception cultivation was quicker than average, together with his accidental discovery of this Dissas Force weapon just in time for him to achieve the first stage of release, it could be said that he was quite fortunate. Lan Shan, the middle-aged man muttered his daughter's name, his gaze looking at her became firm, I will definitely protect you. Yuan, the little girl nodded, seemingly a girl of very little words. Ever since her mother's death a few days ago, she had become like this. Chapter 156, Volume 2, Chapter 54, Rays of Light Translator, La 09 The middle-aged man looked at his emotionless daughter and felt his face stiffen. It all happened on the day that the disease broke out. His wife, his daughter's mother, couldn't survive the infection. She wasn't able to recognize the breathing rhythm in time, so she suffocated and became a zombie. Due to the trauma of her mother's death, his daughter Lan Shan was afflicted with depression. If this was still a peaceful society, he would be able to find her a decent psychologist to help her cope and gradually return to a normal mental state. However, in this apocalyptic hellscape, within this heavily infested area, where would he find such a person to even start her treatment? There would surely be some in non-infected areas, but from what he learned from radio transmissions, the government had fully closed off every infected area, forbidding both entry and exit for any person. While that was the case, it was quite simple for those who wished to enter, all they needed to do was bribe the soldiers a little bit in order to be sneaked inside, after all, it's hard to prevent everybody from courting death. On the other hand, a person from inside the infected zone wanting to get out was a lot harder. There was a formal way to do this, of course, as long as you could prove yourself uninfected through a series of rigorous tests and undergo disinfection, you could return to the peaceful zone, but any infected would be beaten unconscious and sent back without mercy. Not even soldiers or officers dared to perform any shady maneuver regarding this. 
the upper echelons had issued very clear directives regarding how unforgivable such actions were, regardless of what rank you are. If any infected person is found outside of the infected zone, every personnel involved will be shot and killed on the spot without going to military court. In other words, it was next to impossible for them to leave the infected zone at this point in time, the middle-aged man couldn't do anything except interact regularly with his daughter and hoped to find some way to help her escape from her trauma. There's a supermarket up ahead, let's go find some food, the middle-aged man held his daughter's hand tightly, as he wasn't good with words, he could only forcefully change the subject and bring his unresponsive daughter to the supermarket ahead of them. It had only been a bit more than three days since the incident, so food and other supplies were still relatively plentiful, but not too long later, food would become a precious resource. Perhaps I should gather a few people, form a base and cultivate some edible food. While eating a slice of white bread, the middle-aged man had such a thought, but he didn't really have a specific plan or course of action in mind. After all, he was originally just a blue-collar worker, he didn't really understand how to manage people. HM. This sensation, is a zombie approaching us, after the middle-aged man achieved the first stage of release, not only did he obtain an, origin, ability, but his, origin, also started to derive more power for his soul, increasing its quality and greatly heightened his senses of perception. The roof of the small supermarket was directly broken through as a man dressed in all black clothing slowly stood up. Under the demon-like mask, a pair of wild beast-like eyes aggressively eyed the middle-aged man, staring at the disass force sword in his hand. It was you who took what belonged to me, wasn't it? As the dust spread, Chen Diaishi's mask slowly parted to reveal his face. A human? The middle-aged man wielded his sword and shielded his daughter. The other party was covered in something that gave off a thick aura of mutated germs, but as he spoke and revealed his face, he was also giving off a human aura. I didn't take anything from anybody. I even traded the food in this supermarket with money, even if the owner isn't currently here, the middle-aged man could clearly sense the malice coming from the other party and tried to explain. If possible, he didn't want to get into conflict with anybody. That disass force weapon in your hand is mine, Chen Di 11 stated, that was prepared for none other than myself, but you took it from me when I was just a bit slow. You're joking, aren't you? The middle-aged man's expression became displeased. Disass force weapons are clearly first come first serve, who would prepare these things for anyone else? That was nothing but a weak excuse to steal my disass force weapon. From how he came in by breaking through the ceiling, as well as the strange skin-tight bodysuit around his body, the middle-aged man recognized that this wasn't someone to be trifled with. If the other side demanded anything else, he might have already given it up without a fight. In fact, before he formed a connection with this disass force weapon, he might have actually given it to him without hesitation. However, now that he had formed a connection with the disass force weapon and even achieved the first stage of release, once his connection with the disass force weapon was severed, there would be severe consequences. He wouldn't necessarily die, but if a weapon attached to his soul was taken away, it would be the same as suffering a heavy cut on his soul. His, origin, ability would be rendered unusable, his soul fallen to an incredibly weakened state. In this apocalyptic environment, falling into that kind of situation would be no different from death. The middle-aged man didn't want to die, not to mention, how would his daughter survive in this hellish environment if he died? Drawing the disass force longsword from its sheath, he pointed it at Chen Di 11 and signaled his daughter to hide somewhere far away, then spoke with a serious expression, leave, or I will show you my power. So, you really have released your, origin, ha? Huh? Despite having guessed this ahead of time, Chen Di 11 still felt a faint sense of regret. He obtained the biomass gear forging method from being the fastest progressing practitioner, 
so if he had been the first to release his origin, he might have gotten another reward, right? Then there's no other way, regardless of what happens, I want that Dissas Force weapon, Chen Di-11 had a general understanding of what would happen to those who had their Dissas Force weapon stolen away, but he didn't care. The strong would prey on the weak, this was the same in both their previous civilized world and this current apocalyptic world, the only difference was that the civilized world had rules to obscure its vicious nature. Chen Di Shi's mask moved on its own and once again covered his face, slightly crouching down, with the support of his biomass gear, he shot like a cannonball towards the middle-aged man. Since he managed to achieve the first stage of release so quickly, the middle-aged man wasn't a slouch either, the heightened senses brought by his improved soul allowed him to perceive Chen Di Shi's movements and hurriedly dodged away, the sword in his hand slashed at Chen Di 11 without form or technique. In the civilized world, both of them were normal people who hadn't been through any official combat training, so their fight would naturally not have any strategy or technique to speak of. Relying on his excellent senses, the middle-aged man evaded Chen Diaishi's attack, then slashed the other party once in his panic. As the middle-aged man didn't know any swordsmanship and had acted in a hurry, he couldn't exert any force and caused basically no damage to Chen Di-11 who had biomass gear to protect himself. As Chen Di-11 saw the gash on his armor gradually healing itself, he calmed himself down. He thought the first person to achieve the first stage of release would be some sort of impressive fighter, but it turned out he was only an amateur as well. In a fight between amateurs, the one who had the better defense had the natural advantage, after he confirmed this, Chen Di-11 continued to rush towards the middle-aged man, causing the middle-aged man to start feeling cold feet. I'm not used to it yet, but I can't do anything but use my, origin, ability now. As the middle-aged man held the longsword tightly in both hands, rays of light began to appear from it. Chapter 157, Volume 2 Chapter 55, Amateurs Pecking One Another Translator, La 009 The standard longsword in the middle-aged man's hand started to change. The originally straight blade turned into a T shape, basically a morphing to have a longer handguard that curved backwards in order to protect the wielder's hands. The sword's shape changed, is this a unique characteristic of a soul-bound weapon activating its power? Chen Di-11 stopped his advance and cautiously observed the middle-aged man, only to see the man charging straight at him while wielding his strange T-shaped sword. Feeling a bit indecisive, Chen Di-11 chose to retreat. Thanks to his armor, both his strength and speed surpassed the middle-aged man, as he dashed through the sports section, Chen Di-11 randomly picked up two tubes of tennis balls. He then threw a tennis ball straight towards the middle-aged man to attack him, who instinctively tried to avoid it, but the tennis ball had already been sliced in half and landed on either side before it even reached him. Did he swing his sword just now? Seeing the split tennis ball, Chen Di-11 continued to run while throwing another tennis ball in his hand towards the middle-aged man. Sure enough, as the ball approached the man, it was directly cut apart, while the middle-aged man only held the T-shaped sword in his hand without swinging it at all. After using his ability, he gained an invisible layer of protection around his body that cuts anything that approaches him apart. Chen Di-11 might be quite a talented fighter. Although his combat skills were garbage and his fighting prowess wasn't particularly or inspiring, his combat senses were accurate. After engaging in combat, he was able to keep his calm and quickly analyze the other party's ability while estimating both sides' advantages and disadvantages. Once he was a bit more experienced, he had the potential to become a strong combatant. This kind of ability shouldn't last for very long, after all, it hasn't been that long since this man obtained the Dissas Force weapon and released his origin, Chen Di-11 calmly assessed the situation. First I'll kite him around using my speed advantage, 
once he's tired and his ability loses its effectiveness, I'll go on the offensive. Although, there's a faster way as well, Chen Diaishi's gaze briefly glanced at the sullen girl who stood a bit away from their battle. That girl seems to be this man's daughter, if I'm able to catch and use her as a hostage, this battle will end a lot quicker. You scum, what are you trying to do? The middle-aged man immediately noticed Chen Diaishi's gaze and loudly cursed him, quickly increasing his speed as he charged towards Chen Di-11 with his sword in hand. Chen Di-11 broke through the wall of the supermarket and declared with a grim voice from underneath his mask, There is indeed that method, but don't worry, I won't resort to that. I can utilize any strategy in battle, but using the family members of other people to threaten them can't be called a strategy, Chen Di-11 slowly spoke, defeating you and taking back my Dissas Force weapon is the only thing I'm after. I'm not interested in harming a fellow human. Glancing at the middle-aged man's slightly relaxed expression, Chen Di-11 silently felt a small bit of triumph. His words just now managed to weaken the man's fighting spirit. He was purposefully leaving a path for him to escape, like encircling an enemy with only three generals instead of four, this way, he successfully prevented the man from resorting to certain desperate measures. Although his kiting tactic was working, it wasn't very easy for Chen Di-11 to do so. Firstly, the other party wasn't that much slower than he was. Although the main advantage of achieving the first stage of release was obtaining an origin, ability and a greater soul quality, the releasing of origin also somewhat improved his constitution. Secondly, his opponent's ability to predict his movement was incredibly accurate. The middle-aged man was able to predict where Chen Di-11 was about to run, so if he made just a single mistake, he would be caught up without fail, and Chen Di-11 wasn't confident that his biomass gear would be able to defend him against the man's ability. Thirdly, Chen Di-Shi's biomass gear was combat effective, but it also had considerable consumption. At this point, he could already feel the biomass gear screaming in hunger, so he would have to eat a very hearty meal after this fight in order to replenish himself. Oh no, I can't keep this up. The middle-aged man was breathing heavily as he felt his head aching in pain. Just as Chen Di-11 had predicted, having only just obtained his origin ability, he couldn't utilize it for a very long period of time. His ability was called Blade of Protection. After activation, everyone behind his sword would fall under its protection, and any act of aggression would be met with automatic counterattacks from the sword. But if I give up now, what would become of Lan Shan? She's still too young, how would she survive in this world? The middle aged man's eyes were already bloodshot, his head aching so much that he could feel it breaking apart, but as he thought about his daughter, he could only persevere. How could he still be so insistent when there's no hope to be seen? Chen Di-11 silently complained in his mind. The feeling of hunger coming from his biomass gear was becoming increasingly more severe, to the point that it had begun to affect his mind and movements. He could clearly tell that the man would soon collapse, while he appeared completely unfazed from the outside, so how could the man still keep this up? Is it because of his family? Chen Di-11 gritted his teeth, contemplating retreat. If he persevered any longer, the biomass gear might just go on strike and put him into a dangerous situation. A Dissas Force weapon might be precious, but this wasn't the only one, if the other party could actually continue, then the correct decision for him right now was to retreat. The middle-aged man glanced at his young daughter hiding in the corner with a slightly lonely expression. His thoughts already becoming blurred, the events of the past three days flashed through his mind. His wife couldn't survive the attack of the virus and was turned into a zombie, then mindlessly attacked their daughter who was right next to her. Fortunately, the middle-aged man managed to arrive just in time. In order to protect their daughter, he had to kill his wife who had turned into a zombie at the time. 
This already left an irreversible trauma in their daughter's heart, so if her father, what if he were to fall right in front of her as well? Would that not cause her mental scars to worsen? To protect my family, this was the only wish of this middle-aged salaryman who had suffered throughout his daily life. Because of this, his ability was the blade of protection, however, just as he was able to kill his zombified wife in order to save his daughter, his ability had a certain hidden side to it. Wielding the T-shaped sword in his hand, he pointed it straight at Chen Di-11, in order to protect his family, a sword that was originally just to protect could also be turned to hurt others. The middle-aged man abruptly swung his sword forward, then powerlessly fell to the ground. The air was split apart, an invisible slash came flying and struck Chen Di-11 on his chest, cutting through the jet-black bodysuit to reveal the soft flesh underneath. The slash then continued forward, ripping his skin apart and splattering his blood everywhere, causing Chen Di-11 to scream in extreme pain and desperation. In the end, his combat experience was still too lacking, unable to predict that the other party's ability could change, leading to him suffering a heavy injury. Even worse than that was the fact that his biomass gear was broken, causing a maddening pang of hunger to attack his psyche. Whether it was to replenish his vitality or to repair his armor, he needed a large amount of food. The supermarket right next to them had already been raided a few times by other survivors, so its food supplies had already dwindled quite a bit. Due to this, the closest source of food suited for his needs was the man right in front of him, and the symbiotic biomass gear was already urging him to take action. Chapter 158, Volume 2, Chapter 56, Birth of a Disaster King Translator, La 09 Negari knew about Chen Diaishi's fight, even the fact that he entered the symbiotic form with his biomass gear was part of Negari's plans. Among the infected, Chen Diaishi's constitution was especially suitable with the spiritual inception, germs and had the potential to become a powerhouse. However, due to his life in modern society, a lot of his edge had already been shaved away by reality, causing his personality to deviate towards being gentle. Fusing with the viral consciousness of his biomass gear would help Chen Di-11 become more competitive. However, after this battle began, Negari immediately realized that something was wrong. Although he planned for Chen Di-11 to enter a symbiotic relationship with a viral consciousness, he didn't purposely plan for him to lose his Dissas Force weapon and became unable to advance. In fact, Negari favored Chen Di-11 enough to give him the location of a Dissas Force weapon that was especially well hidden, enough that it normally wouldn't be found. And yet, such a well-hidden Dissas Force weapon was accidentally found by a middle-aged man, who managed to connect with it and release his origin at a strangely rapid pace. All coincidences are inevitable. All of Negari's actions in this world had been under the assumption of that statement being fact. Negari didn't know much about this middle-aged man. Although he was the first person to achieve the first stage of release, it was actually more accurate to say that he was the first person to find a Dissas Force weapon. In order to create an artificial level of difficulty for these people, all Dissas Force weapons were either hidden away, or placed in treacherous spots, which meant that both time and abilities were necessary for anyone to obtain any of them. There were quite a few people whose progress with spiritual inception was considerably faster than this middle-aged man. Including the three domains that Negari personally spread the spiritual inception, germs as well as the other domains spread by his secret subordinates, the total number of people affected by the spiritual inception, germs had surpassed 100 million. At this point, there should be around 30 million infected with around 3 million of them who managed to adapt and became spiritual inception practitioners. With so many people, there was no way for Negari to personally observe each and every one, so he only chose to pay attention to a few with particular potential and had made considerable progress. 
the middle-aged man's progress was only middle upper level, together with his age that had basically settled the potential of his soul, Negari didn't pay much attention to him in the beginning. If the middle-aged man had coincidentally obtained any other Dissas Force weapons, Negari wouldn't have taken any notice, but the exact one that he came across was the one that Negari selected for Chen Di-11. So something is trying to use this middle-aged man to contaminate a piece that I picked out. Negari scowled and sensed Chen Di Shi's current movements. Chen Di Shi's eyes had gotten bloodshot, the hunger transmitting from his biomass gear had gotten so bad that his consciousness completely lapsed. The armor around his body started to become animated, what was originally a bodysuit started to morph and change like a living slimy creature even extending feelers and tentacles towards where the unconscious man had collapsed in order to grab him. However, what use is that? Negari started thinking, the most intense emotion of that middle-aged man was his will to protect his family. If Chen Di-11 allows his biomass gear to consume the middle-aged man, it's very likely that he's going to be contaminated with this emotion. This should be meaningless, since Chen Di-11 doesn't have any family members to protect, these emotions would simply fade away after a short time Negari analyzed the situation, which means, the most likely scenario is that he starts to direct these contaminated emotions towards the little girl. With the sense of guilt from devouring her father and the contaminated emotions, Chen Di-11 would definitely regard this little girl called Lan Shan to be an extremely important person to himself Negari's eyes flickered and interfered. Chen Di-11 abruptly collapsed on one knee while clutching his heart. It felt as if someone had just put a finger in and stirred his heart up, causing him to tremble in cold sweat. His mind started to regain its natural clarity, his armor had also gotten unprecedentedly docile. Realizing what he was about to do, Chen Di-11 hurriedly picked up the Dissas Force weapon that had returned to normal. From the drained soul power he sensed within the sword, it shouldn't take a lot of time for him to completely cut off this weapon's connection with the middle-aged man. Having obtained his Dissas Force weapon, Chen Di-11 swiftly left the area without minding the survival of any other people. Perhaps due to the battle just now, or perhaps due to other reasons, the supermarket suddenly collapsed, causing the rubble to completely bury the barely alive middle-aged man. Standing afar, the little girl watched as her father was buried with tears streaming down her face, as she quickly ran in front of the collapsed structure, she appeared incredibly powerless. An enormous amount of Dissas force began to manifest out of nowhere, filling the gigantic infected zone. Negari's gaze flickered. Having created the infected zone, Negari was constantly accumulating more Dissas Force without stopping, but just earlier, the flow of Dissas Force was abruptly split and delegated to another person. So that's what it was. That little girl is the holder of Super Plague, isn't she? Negari was walking towards a certain emergency shelter when he felt the signs of a new disaster king being born and turned towards that direction. If I did not interfere just now, Chen Di-11 would have turned into the protector of the new disaster king Negari turned away and continued up the stairs with a pondering expression on his face. However, why was the chosen disaster king a little girl with a severe psychological issue? There should be countless people with much greater potential, and yet such a little girl was chosen instead. Is there something I don't know about the selection process of authority holders? Negari had such a thought. It could clearly be seen just how much the other party counteracted his abilities by the fact that over half of the Dissas force that was supposed to go to him was taken by her authority right after she had just appeared. If a more fitting host had been chosen, Negari would have found it considerably harder to deal with them, but when the host was just an immature girl with personal trauma, it was almost as if Negari was handed an opportunity. Negari flung open the gates of the emergency shelter with his bare hands. Over 100 million people had been affected by the spiritual inception, plague, 
that the number of people that actually got infected was only 30% of that. The main contribution to this was this world's well-established shelter bunkers that allowed the majority of civilians to quickly get to safety. Even if some people had germs lingering on their hands or feet, as long as they hadn't been infected, the disinfection procedure that everyone had to go through successfully killed off those germs. And so, for the past few days, other than observing the progress of spiritual inception, Negari had been traveling from shelter to shelter and breaking them open to increase the number of infected people a huge batch at a time. Should I send someone to kill her while she still hasn't fully grasped how to use disas force? After pondering this seemingly sensible solution, Negari shook his head. If he actually did such a thing, the results would be inevitably predictable. The D.E. division, the government, and perhaps, even the entity behind this world's destiny didn't wish for the newly born, super plague, authority holder to die. When he purposely tried to track Fang Zedi's location, although he couldn't get a hold of their exact position, he still managed to discover Fang Zedi's group to be quite near, super plague, through the eyes of the infected. Some stalling will be necessary. I will have to send a few people to halt their progress and by myself some more time. Negari's body started to morph and turned into a large three-winged dragon, then swiftly took off. Chapter 159, Volume 2, Chapter 57, Stalling for Time Translator, La 09 That direction, while riding in a modified jeep, Fang Zi abruptly looked up. His eyes were sharp, almost as if he could see through the scenery from far away. As a disaster king and someone who had achieved the first stage of release, Fang Zedi's perception was extremely strong, immediately able to find the epic enter of the reaction right as the first disas force fluctuation manifested. After pointing to the exact location on the map, he sat down in the jeep with a heavy heart. Fang Zi had already fought Negari once before. Now that he had time to think about it, the flow of their battle at the time was completely dictated by the other party, and that was when his disas force was still vastly inferior to his own. After some analysis from the D.E.A .E. division's experts, his authority should have already been promoted to grade F, becoming a disaster king just like him. If the two of them fought again, Assuming that their disas force were at the same level, Fang Zi found himself helpless to win against him even with his newly acquired, star force, ability. The D.E. .A division had also shown him footage of his three-winged dragon form destroying their fighter jets. That ridiculous presence and overwhelming destructiveness wasn't something he was capable of. Wang Yuan's essence is that of a super virus from another world. Unless we have the help of the Disaster King Black Death, there is no real chance for us to defeat him and return this world to its original appearance. Fang Zi fell into thought. Disaster King Black Death was another name for the Disaster King who held the authority, Super Plague, based on one of the most famous plagues in human history, the Black Death. Because the infected zone was completely covered in the, spiritual inception, germs, those who came into the infected zone in search of disaster King Black Death were all authority holders. Authority holders had the ability to destroy any, spiritual inception, germs that came into their respiratory tract with their disas force and ensured that they wouldn't become infected. Let us speed up, disaster King Black Death had only just manifested and is unable to use disas force, they might run into danger in such an environment, Changshia pushed up his glasses and commented. As the sixth domain had completely fallen into chaos, as the section chief of the sixth domain D.E.R division, he was naturally to blame. Furthermore, Seven who sneaked away from her responsibilities was nearly brought to military court. Naturally, if Seven hadn't come to help Changshia when he was fighting against Wang Zhao in the UBU University battle, he might not have won against the other party and made it in time to help Fang Zi defeat the leather jacket man. We're already going very fast, the authority holder of, 
traffic jam, was the one at the wheels. Now that the entire city had fallen into a half-paralyzed state, he was the only one capable of finding a route without any blockage in this huge domain. If he still couldn't find a path, then they would forcefully make one. With a press of a button on this modified military jeep, two guiding rails appeared on either side of the jeep with a couple of small ballistic missiles equipped. Sitting on the passenger seat, Seven to came through an electronic device and fired, blasting a number of cars that were blocking the road ahead of them away. The modified jeep continued through the flames, quickly making its way towards the point marked on the map. Several terrifying zombies were also swiftly moving through the streets, some of which had even taken on the appearance of liquid that was constantly moving on the ground, as well as other zombies with even stranger mutations. For example, a few zombies had grown a pair of black crow wings, flapping as they made their way towards where they were being directed. Another zombie had attached itself onto a bicycle and had almost fully fused together with the vehicle, leaving only a thin mass of germs pushing the pedals forward, making it look as if a ghostly bicycle was making its way through the collapsed streets. Under Negri's summoning, having adapted to their environments, the mutated germs were not on their way to attack the little girl Lanshan, but rather to get into the way and prevent Fang Zedi's group from being able to reach her. Negri was sure that if he actually sent monsters to attack Lan Shan right now, Fang Zedi's group would miraculously make it there just in time to save her. In fact, under the effects of his, protagonist aura, this maneuver would somehow fix Lan Shan's trauma as well, just a cup of meaningless chicken soup would fix her right up and gain Negri another powerful foe. In this world where even the smallest chance occurrence could happen with inevitability as long as it was necessary, that would be nothing but child's play. With a slight wiggle, a street lamp abruptly turned into liquid and fell onto the roof of the modified jeep. Under Negri's interference, this mass of liquid germ began to change its property and gained the characteristics of metal-eating germs. As the ear-screeching sound of metal being consumed resounded from above, Fang Zi looked up to see the warped roof of the car. He knew that Negri had finally begun to act, Dissas force surged forward from his body to disintegrate the germs as well as the roof of the car. However, immediately after that, a small bump on the ground abruptly shot up to the bottom of the car, sought out every small gap it could find and started to destroy the vehicle from the inside. Damn it, the mimicry of these things is ridiculous. Before the germ shot up towards the car, none of the people on it had managed to discover the disguised germs at all. They simply had poor compatibility, the only person in the car that could briefly sense the germs was Fang Zi who had achieved the first stage of release, unfortunately, he didn't know how to drive. An authority holder's ability was mainly to destroy. If you wanted them to create or prevent a disaster under their control, they'd naturally be able to do it, but the only person who had an authority that had anything to do with vehicles was, Traffic Jam. After being attacked by a mutated germ, this jeep's journey had essentially come to an end. The group had no choice but to stop the car, seeing how badly the underside had been eaten through by the germs they could only give up on this jeep and look for bicycles in order to reach where they needed to. While riding on the road, a fire hydrant abruptly moved and turned into a mass of liquid as it attacked Lucia on her bike. A mass of disass force surged forward and smacked this mass of liquid away, under the intense heat property of the disass force, the germs completely lost its activity. The burnt germs gave off an extremely nauseating smell, when they thought of the fact that this creature that looked like a mass of liquid used to be a human, they felt even more nauseated, but also further solidified their faith of defeating Negri. On their way, they continued to suffer the attack of various germ creatures that disguised themselves as mundane things on the road. Although they could easily dispatch these creatures with disass force after detecting them, they still needed to locate them first. For this reason, 
they couldn't help but slow their pace and carefully observe their surroundings in order to prevent themselves from suffering another ambush. If they still had their car, even if the road was blocked, they'd be able to reach Disaster King Black Death in just half a day, but after being forced to give up their car for bicycles, it took an entire afternoon for them to make one third of the journey. It's already getting late, those monsters' camouflage ability would only become even more terrifying at night, Changxia said with a serious expression. Furthermore, we've been on constant guard for the entire afternoon, our spirits won't last at this rate. We need to rest. What's the current situation? Due to the continuation of this large-scaled plague, both Disaster King Black Death and Negari still gave off a constant disass force fluctuation. Wang Yuan had been constantly moving about, but Disaster King Black Death had stayed in a single place without moving, Fang Zi reported after briefly sensing. Then, let's find somewhere for us to rest for the night. As the group randomly picked a hotel to enter, Fang Zi felt like something amiss as he entered, although he was unsure if it was only his imagination. Chapter 160, Volume 2, Chapter 58 Traffic Jam. Translator, La 09. Who are you? As they entered the hotel, several people gathered with their weapons ready in hand, two to three of them even had guns. Consider us the search team, Changxia wasn't panicked, nor was there a need for him to be, and curtly replied, someone entrusted us to enter the seventh domain to find a survivor and ensure their safety. Simply that. After cautiously observing Changxia's group for a while, they lowered their weapons, but still kept their guard up and said, the second floor is our area. If there's no issue, please do not approach the second floor. We don't wish for there to be any conflict. After that, the group slowly retreated to the second floor without minding Fang Zedi's group any longer. Those two were probably police officers, regretfully. Changxia didn't say what he felt regretful about. In theory, the police should be the ones to maintain peace and order when there was a disaster, but after finding out that they themselves had been discarded by the government, being able to protect their own people was already quite decent of them. This hotel doesn't seem too bad, right? The group of eight followed the stairs up to the third floor, where everything was left neatly and orderly, as if someone had maintained this hotel even during this disaster. Within the dimly lit corridor, everyone carefully observed their surroundings while walking slowly on the soft felt carpets, watching out for any mutated germs creatures that might abruptly spring to attack them. Xiao Bia Fu carefully knocked on the frame of a painting with his dagger as they walked past, only to see that it tilted a bit from becoming off-center. The coast is clear no issues found. After a systematic check of the third floor and confirming that there were no issues, they picked out from double rooms that were right next to each other and delegated night guard duty among themselves. However, no one seemed to notice that the tilted painting had become centered once again, as if an invisible hand had moved it. Around 8 to 9 p.m., another group of people arrived at the hotel. It was almost as if this hotel had some sort of magic, those who walked by this area would notice this hotel without fail as they felt tired and wanted somewhere to rest. Perhaps it was due to them being used to the living conditions of modern life, when having to choose between resting in a hotel or among a bunch of rubble, a hotel where everything was neat and tidy naturally became their first choice. Among these two rooms, Zhong Zijie, Xiao Biefu, Traffic Jam, and Zhong Wei were in one room, while the other room had Changxia, Fang Zi, Liu Xia, and Seven. Lying on the bed, Zhong Zijie seemed to be dreaming of something unpleasant, he originally gained his authority, pothole, due to being a victim of one such disaster, and right now, he was having the same sensation of being sunken in while lying on the soft bed. Traffic Jam and Zhong Wei were silently performing their night guard duties. The two of them were also feeling incredibly tired, having to fend off those mimicking mutated germs creatures since noon. 
I'll be going out for a smoke. Traffic jam, reported in a low voice to John Wei before going out to the hallway and lit a cigarette. As the nicotine cleared his mind somewhat, he was about to make his way back inside when he abruptly lost his footing. The ground itself had turned into black mud and pulled him down while emitting a unique frequency to suppress the fluctuations of traffic jam, s -dis force. The ground gradually returned to silence, manifesting as the soft felt carpets once more. A hand proceeded to burst out from below with surging dis force. Trying to destroy the black substance, but more of the substance swiftly gathered around the hand, completely suppressed the dis force fluctuations with their own unique frequency before soundlessly swallowed it up again. While standing guard in his room, Zhong Wei felt something amiss, traffic jam, s smoke break had gone on for a bit too long. When he was about to call out and wake the two sleeping people up, the ground abruptly moved, manifesting tentacles that instantly wrapped around him, restraining his arms, legs, mouth, and nose to prevent him from making any loud noises. His dis force surged forward to strike the tentacles, but couldn't damage them too much, these tentacles seemed to have a certain level of dis force resistance, capable of mitigating the majority of the damage caused by dis force. Even more terrifyingly, any and all dis force fluctuation was completely suppressed. Originally, Authority holders of the government had undergone training to become extremely sensitive to dis force, capable of snapping out of their sleep if they sensed even a faint hint of dis force fluctuation. But now, these black tentacles had the same property as a dis force suppression device, capable of masking dis force fluctuations. They only had their superiors to blame for this as they traded several secret research materials with Negari for various benefits, among them were the dis force sensing technology and the dis force material forging technology, both of which had been used by Negari to supplement his spiritual inception method. However, there was also the dis force stabilization technology, which was actually the method to manufacture dis force suppression devices. While this wasn't used for his technique, Negari still kept it in mind, as he knew technology to mask and hide dis force fluctuation would always come in handy. Zhong Wei intensely struggled in order to cause a bit of commotion, but to no avail as he was eventually swallowed by the ground and vanished as well. Following this, the two beds in the room were slowly taken over and sunk into the ground as well. The descent was gradual, but as they got close enough, Tentacles sprouted from all around the bed to restrain their bodies and mouth, pulling them as well as their beds down below. Only Zhong Zijia managed to notice anything due to his authority, but couldn't react in time before the tentacles grabbed and restrained him. In the other room, Fang Zi and Liu Xia were responsible for night guard duty. Fang Zi scowled, as he felt this level of silence to be somewhat unnatural and uncomfortable. I'm going to check the other room, try to be careful, Fang Zi said in a whispering voice, then went out to the hallway. The dim hallway without lights didn't affect Fang Zedi's vision, after achieving the first stage of release, he obtained an overall better physique. While standing in the hallway, he kept feeling that something was out of place and decided to knock on the other room's door. Not getting a response even after a while, Fang Zedi's expression changed and immediately used his immense dis force to break through the door and was greeted by an empty room. Muttering oh no, to himself, he hurriedly returned to his own room by blasting the door open, only to see that the other side of the door wasn't a room but instead black flesh. When Fang Zedi's dis force attacked the black flesh, the expected complete disintegration didn't occur. He did take out a huge chunk of the flesh but couldn't completely destroy it, not to mention, it was rapidly regaining its shape. The entire hotel began to come alive, the hallways morphed and twisted, the items inside strewn all around. Numerous tentacles extended from every imaginable angle and reached towards Fang Zi. 
Fang Zedi's disass force kept on pouring out of his body and destroyed the black tentacles as well as everything around them. With a sizzling noise and blue smoke, the masses of broken tentacles were reabsorbed by the black flesh below, the hallway gradually shrunk smaller and smaller. This entire hotel is a huge mutated germ creature. Fang Zi heavily scowled. After determining a general direction, his disass force surged forward again to blow open a path and immediately leapt out from the hotel.